Hello. I thought I'd walk a bit later, so you took by surprise there. It's a cute <laughs> rules, won't it? Right. Hope I'm doing this correctly. Yep. Have you got that as a full screen? So you just need to. Um, yes. Yeah. That's there. Fabulous. That's it. Right. First of all, hi, everybody. Welcome back. And thank you for letting me um, give me the opportunity to talk about the wonderful Acorns Children's Hospice. So I'll do a very quick whistle to, uh, stop tour of who we are, what we do, um, and hopefully you'll feel a little bit differently. I know we've all got different misconceptions sometimes about what a children's hospice looks like. Um, most of us know what they do, but um, yeah, people can perceive them to be quite sad places when in fact they really aren't sad places at all. So um, I'm Mel and I'm the area fundraiser for Acorns Children's Hospice. Uh, part of a brilliant fundraising team. So Acorns Children's Hospice is the largest UK's um, children's hospice charity, uh, which supports children who are life limited or life threatened from birth to 18. Um, a parent naturally never imagines um, their child will be diagnosed with a life limiting or life threatening condition. But when the unthinkable happens, Acorns is one of the wonderful children's hospices that steps in that helps families cope at every step of the way. So we've got three children's hospices. Sorry, I should have gone back to there. I've missed a slide. Um, one in Selly Oak in Birmingham, one in the Black Country um, in Warsaw, and the one that I'm affiliated to, which I'll talk to you about, which is Acorns for the Three Counties, which is based in Worcester. So a little bit of history about um, Acorns for the Three Counties. This goes back to 2000, where a beautiful couple who unfortunately couldn't have children June and Willie um, donated three acres of worth of their land, um, which was worth 1.4 million pounds to Acorns, which those that know um, the counties of Worcestershire, Gloucestershire, Herefordshire, Warwickshire, land is exceptionally expensive. So it was like gold dust, but it was on provisors that we um, made a home for their two donkeys, Dottie and Sally, which we took on board um, and there started Acorns for the three counties. And in November 20, uh, 2001, the site officially opened after planners gave it the go ahead. So they launched an appeal for Acorns for the Three Counties. So I live in Chowton, just to give you some sort of concept. So for me, living in Gloucestershire, uh, my local children's hospice before Acorns for the Three Counties in Worcester would have been either over in Oxford or up in Birmingham, which is our other children's hospice. So, up launch to the appeal, we needed to raise £4 million, which was needed to build the Worcester Hospice. And then in January 2004, the appeal topped £3 million. Um, and then no, uh, December 2004, a series of open days held before the children and families arrived when it then opened in 2005, which was opened by the, um, it was a royal opening by the Duchess of Gloucester. So how I was introduced to Acorns, um, quite old pictures there, but my two beautiful children, Tom with the hat on, I don't know why I'm pointing because you can't see where I'm pointing. And then you've got lovely Matthew, um, who is the youngest. And sadly, Matthew, when he was um, three years old, started to fall poorly. And in 2005, sorry, that was back in 2005. In 2007, he was diagnosed with late infantile baton disease which is an exceptionally rare neurodegenerative disease, which is life limiting, where he wasn't expected to reach the age, well, between the ages of eight and 12. So we were referred to Acorns Children's Hospice um, for support. So what makes Acorns Children's Hospice special? So our care teams treat the child, not the condition, um, from, you know, from their families um, to breakfast, to their bedtime routine. So from their favourite breakfast, sorry, to their bedtime routine, something that's happened over in COVID is that children's hospices, it's very much a home from home environment. But naturally, we've all had to wear PPE with the face covering. So it's been, you know, there's been a lot of um, hurdles to get over, but still the care is carried on. So one thing that we thrive on is we make every day count. And as you can see by this, the children's hospices, they're very bright, they're very comfortable. They offer welcoming, homely environment. And ordinarily, and we are getting back to that now, very much a home from home environment. So support for the families. Um, it's estimated for every child who's diagnosed with a life limit or life threatening condition, five family members will be directly impacted. 
So what we do is offer support to the whole families in a number of different ways. On referral to the hospice, um, the families will be allocated um, a professional team worker, and then they've also got the care and support within the hospice. So part of the services that we offer are hydrotherapy. Um, a lot of our children aren't as mobile um, as others, but also if you can imagine going to your, um, your local swim baths, they're always really cold. They're always, you know, it's always a quick rush and everything's, you know, um, just, just miserable. I've always found them miserable anyway, um, going to the local swimming bar. So something that we do is offer family splash sessions, which for a number of our families, this is something they just couldn't do. Um, the hydrotherapy pools are at a really, really warm temperature, but what it also allows um, for the children who are um, life limited, life threatened, it enables them to have mobility in the right temperature, in the right environment. Um, and it's something I know that lots of families um, really, really enjoy and get a lot out of. So also offering music therapy, um, for a number of our families, um, it could be things like mother and toddler groups, it could be um, different, you know, sessions that they, we would ordinarily go to. Um, we offer different um, age appropriate music therapy sessions, um, so they can have a lot of fun with all of their peers, um, beautiful family there, Oscar, um, which they always thoroughly enjoy. And there's always things, um, arts and craft and glitter and Believe you me, if, if you ever get the opportunity um, to go to a children's hospice, there's always glitter everywhere. There's always arts and craft, lots of paintings, um, and it's an absolute joy to see it. And then we always make sure there's lots of magical moments. Um, sadly for our children who aren't expected to reach adulthood, um, we do do our absolute best to create happy memories for them. Um, the middle picture um, of the little boy on the motorbike, I was privileged to witness. Um, we had an Italian motocross team that came actually into the hospice. The head of care would have gone absolutely nuts if she'd been there. The motorbikes were going up and down the corridors over ramps with the children on their laps. All, it was all fine and checked and health and safety and everything. Um, but it's just magical moments for the children and for their families to watch and for the gardens as well. Um, our gardens give the families access, um, which sometimes you know, some of our families don't have access to gardens, but it gives them space, peace and quiet, very tranquil, they're beautiful um, and something that gives the families opportunity to have lots of time together. Now, sadly, there is the end of life care, um, which we offer for the families, but it's a crucial part of what we do. Um, for a lot of our families, um, it could th th there's lots of different ways with regards to end of life. It could be in the hospice, it could be um, at home, it could also be in hospital. Um, however it is, our nurses support our families all the way through this, but also what we do have is um, two special bedrooms where after the child has passed away, um, the children can stay with us up until the funeral, which gives the family the gift of time which is truly priceless. Um, and it is an emotive subject to talk about, and it is something that, you know, most people can't even imagine, but that part of what we do um, really does, um, it champions everything that Acorns and other children's hospice does because it is vital for our families. So the crucial part with regards to a lot of these charities um, is the funding. Um, as you can only imagine, COVID has hit massively with charities. We've thankfully managed to um to get through it and we're, we're doing okay um and you know hopefully fingers crossed things will continue and we can you know still offer the care to all of the families but when you look at the figures we need 10 million pounds a year to run the three children's hospices which is a lot of funding a lot of fundraising um and then going down to how much we actually need to fundraise um, so we rely heavily on donations to fund the majority of active, in the past year, the local community provided around 60%, so that's £6 million. We do get support from clinical commissioning groups, um, which, you know, we're truly, truly grateful for. Um, but as you can imagine, it's, it's huge. The more money we raise, the more families we can support. And this gives you some examples about how much the different types of care cost what you know what fundraising can pay for um, from the you know the days 
care to the smaller things, just, you know, paying for a meal for a child in the hospice, every single penny does count. So it's with your support um, that makes it possible for us to be there for so many local families when they need us the most. So ways you can help Acorns. So if you or you know a business that, um, that chooses a, um, a charity year of the year, and I know there's people that aren't necessarily from local around this area, so maybe your local children's hospice, um, then that would be wonderful. Participating in any event, volunteering your time, following us on social media. One thing that I'm a massive believer of is um, awareness. It's not necessarily about the pounds and the pence. If you all go away and tell one person about the great work a children's hospice does today, naturally, especially Acorns for us, um, then that's one more person that knows about us. Um, and there's the QR code, which um, thanks for the heads up on that earlier. I didn't have that, but I quickly added it to my presentation. So thank you from me.